get off the freaking net. And welcome to the Blazon Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. And welcome back to Blazon Nation with myself and only myself again. Um. Uh, Episode 6, recorded on October the 3rd, 2013. And, um, rather than just going to the rundown right now, I decided I'd try something a little different. <laughs> In Steam Chat Chaos, or he is Draco Anima in the Twitch thing. He is asking me to introduce him. So, guys, meet Draco and Nima. Anyhow, and more important stuff, um, I decided I'd first talk about how things have gone since the last episode, maybe even before that. Who knows? Um, first of all, Last night, and I'm still working on releasing the episode of that. Oh, and I'm thinking of calling this section, uh, maybe, uh, well, not Journey, because another podcast I love to death uses that for their segment. Uh, but somewhere around that, maybe walk around the town, I don't know, or sidewalk talk, maybe, uh, if you want, send in your suggestion for what I should name the segment, but, uh, here I will talk about how things have gone with my life, and whatnot, so, uh, like I just said, I'm still working on releasing that f- very first episode of my Cookie Clicker podcast, which is also called The Cookie Conundrum, and I cannot believe I forgot to change the title on my stream. Um, if you oh my gosh. I'm not sure, but I got a bad feeling Twitch has signed me out. But anyhow, it is the Cookie Conundrum. And it it was originally going to be the Toonie Tuesday Cookie Clickery podcast, but I decided that was too long and I wanted something more creative. So, Cookie Conundrum it is. And, um, And other stuff today... I looked, sorry, I just hit my mic, I will be sure to edit that out, maybe, I don't know. Um, today, right when I was going to check for episodes of The Legend of Korra, which is a spin-off of, if you've ever heard of it, Avatar The Last Airbender, a uh, kids show about basically a war going on because one um, nation it wants to be the whole basically like the ruler of the world in a sort of way and um, I was just gonna look up these episodes on demand which turns out they're still not on demand yet But all of a sudden, right when I turned on the TV, it was on CTV News Channel, and... Oh. Yes, I can very well agree with you, Thang. The... And I might maybe get into that a little later. Um... But, um... What just recently happened is someone had fired shots on Capitol Hill, which is where I believe the White House is. Actually, yes, now that I remember what was on that map, it was 
by the White House and everybody was evacuated out of the building and whatnot. And yeah. And I I just gotta say in my opinion it, it feels like ever since the Sandy Hook shooting that there's been so many more shootings going on in which after that there's been the um if it can ring into my mind do 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 oh yes there's been the shooting at the Georgian school and actually a lot of this happened during the summer so the Actually, I think more recent than that would be a shooting at a daycare in Quebec, which is one... Sorry about the ding you probably just heard. Um, so what happened in the past was there was the shooting at the was it the Georgian school I was going to talk about first? I'm a little stumped here. Not to mention, outside someone's playing some annoyingly loud music. It's not bad music, but it's loud. And, um... Yeah, so there was the... George... Oh yes, it was the daycare shooting... Guys in the chat room, feel free to remind me of what I was originally talking about. I keep on losing my train of thought. And uh, what it involved was the gunman, who um, probably apparently might have been there to find his ex-wife or something, and kill her or something, and ended up getting in a fight with one of the workers there. And in the end, only the two of them died. Fortunately, no children were killed or injured or any of that. Um, and the funny thing is, is that in Quebec, it's one of the, if not maybe the only province slash territory in Canada that still has the firearm registry. Which, if you're not too sure what that is, it is where you buy a gun and you gotta get your name and gun and you gotta pay money to register it and everything. A uh, complete waste of time and a complete waste of money. When And what it... Like the rest of all this gun control crap is... What they say it's to do is to reduce crime. And you know what, if a bank robber wants to use a gun in a bank robbery, are they going to go register their gun so that they can be tracked more easily? Maybe a stupid bank robber might, but one who actually knows what they're doing, like the bloody devil they would. Unless they're, again, stupid. Or... I don't know, honest, maybe. But, um... And then, I've been working for a radio station, UCB Canada, which they are a Christian radio station. And... That's... Pretty much all that... I really feel like talking about this episode. <laughs> oh, although... I was finally added as an editor to Indie Gamers, which you can find them at Indie Gamers, well, find us at IndieGamers.co.uk, in which there we review, well, they review games and do interviews and all that, and I just edit them. I read a survey in February, and it said 61% cared about restricting guns and ammo than people's constitutional rights to bear arms. It Now, thing, um, I know you aren't a guest, but is that just in America or 
Canada or or what? Then again, you all probably receive this message maybe a couple of seconds after I say it, but um, oh, okay, California. Hmm. The the actually the only thing I really know much about California is that while Arnold Schwarzenegger was in, who is the guy off of the Terminator movies and Predator, etc., is that they banned lead. Just because it's a poisonous metal. When it's used in bobbers and bullets and a whole bunch. In other words, they'd have had to ban fishing um, weights, not bobbers, and bullets because they're all made of lead. And I don't think there's such thing as graphite versions of that. There are that of pencils, but not those things. And, um, people keep on running me off track here. And, oh yes, and then I also got the opportunity of being added onto the editor's team at, well, on the Dead Workers Party website, which you can find them, and they do my most favorite podcast, The Shaft, deadworkers.com engine and like the flippin awesome site that's e n g a i n and thanks thing I i'm really going to enjoy my new position there and um yeah that's about all for my time oh and the fact that i finally was able to get to doing this podcast on a Thursday, which is supposed to be when I run this podcast. Um, oh, and I never got to say much about, or did I? I'm not sure if I really said much about it on episode 5, but, um, you'd have seen, um, if you watched the video version, you'd have seen something next to JBJ Blaze and above the Twitter logo. Um, uh, in stream sponsors and then thing and felt like it. Um, if you want to get your message on the screen during the stream, um, you can do so by going to I am raising dot com slash JBJ Blaze or, um, uh, in the widget below, you can also. Just click on that and it will direct you towards the site and it's and to get your message and alias and stuff on the screen it's as low as a dollar. As for the regular sponsoring, um you can go to the flippin' awesome dot engine dot com slash sponsor yeah I believe it's sponsor and then there will be a link to blaze on Asian or go to the flippin awesome site slash BNP and there will be a link there and just for your name it's about a dollar for name and message 350 but the thing with that is I read I read your stuff rather than just posting it up on the screen. So it's kind of extra special in that sort of way. And in other things... Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Boy, do I love that bass. I'll just say it right now. I love that bass. So in the rundown... What I already talked about during the other section, I mean segment, I already forget what the heck it was I called it, maybe sidewalk talk? Something like that. And, um, I don't really have a link to this at the moment. If I do find a good one, I'll put that in the show notes after. 
or maybe even have an after show feature for it and um, what is going on there well actually I'm not gonna go there cuz I already got there so there's not really any use in doing that um, the first thing I wanted to get to and Gosh, it's one of, it, it it kind of reminds me of um if I can remember it now my very first post on the Blazon Nation official blog which was about the mother who set up the petition towards Nickelodeon to have the sorry I just hit my mic again um, to have them remove their junk food ads, and I made my first ever angry blog, and I still stand by it that they should not rely on these big ticket companies to do their parenting for them, and th this is actually a lot different, but. I still find it as people not reading the text as closely as they should be. And what is going on here is this group, apparently, apparently it's a group. Oh yeah, so I, bo I guess it's Restore Our Anthem, all one word, dot CA, and it's a group of pretty much feminists. Canadians, including Kim Campbell, and I say feminist because the whole um, campaign around it is because the anthem, they believe it's not gender neutral. And the reason they come up with, came up with for this is the part of the anthem that says and all our sons command I mean did I say our sons and all thy sons command and what they think it should be is in all of us command because of that word sons which they believe it refers to male Canadians and what annoys me is there are parts of the anthem that make references to stuff with Christianity and I myself know about this stuff too I'm a actually would that be saying that non-Christians don't know about that stuff I I'm sure they know too but j just for the sake of saying I guess um, and what they didn't seem to want to notice is that when it says, in all thy sons command, and I believe, pardon me, I don't think it got on the stream though, fortunately. Oh yes, the original version, which was... When, which was before 1913, it was Thou dost in us command. Which, um, which is kind of like Shakespeare, in my opinion. Just because of the, of the Thou and dost. Because Shakespeare says that stuff a lot. But, um, the thing is with that is, Thy son. If you, in the Bible and wherever else, that does not refer to male Canadians. It doesn't even refer to male Americans. Then again, why would we be referring to Americans in the Canadian anthem? Because it's all about praising Canada, not ugly Americans. <laughs> and no, that's not meant to be offensive. 
Apologies if anyone's offended there. Then again, we're ugly too. Each one of us is ugly. But. So what they don't. The All Thy Sons command is that the the uh, Thy Son that again is not referring to male Canadians. That is referring to Jesus. Although I guess they have it as sons, which is the plural form of son. One, it should be. Sons with an apostrophe before that second S because it's this thing of the Son, aka Jesus Christ. And unless he was actually a female, it just doesn't work. And the funny thing too is on the RestoreOurAnthem.ca site in support of their whole campaign they have a whole freaking timeline of achievements by women. And I apologize if there's any noise in the background. It, we, we have noisy neighbors. I'm not sure if any of you guys have noisy neighbors. I'm sure we all do. But, um... And if it'll load up here, I'm not exactly sure it will. Because I have Clicky Clicker running. Ah, here it is. So, these Canadian patriots that are in support of this Margaret Atwood, who I don't have a clue what she does. Han Nancy Ruth, I'm not sure who she is. Sally Gooder, Goddard, um, same with her, I don't know who she is. Han Dr. Vivian Poy, don't know who she is. And R.T. Han Kim Campbell. And the funny thing, oh, and they also have you, but I can't count that as correct because I don't support this one freaking bit. But um, I find it funny that they include Kim Campbell in this. And they included her in the timeline of female peoples that have achieved stuff in the past but the thing is there she may have been prime minister but she was only prime minister for how long um don't get me wrong well i'm not sure really what that don't get me wrong thing is supposed to be for but um i am pretty sure No, I lost my sentence there. Well, anyhow, she was the only, the very first female prime minister for one year. How big of an achievement is that? We've had prime ministers and for longer than that. We've even had frickin' liberals and for longer. The longest prime minister in office was the uh, famous what would that game not game William William Lyon Mackenzie King and I think that's a junior on top of that um he was in for maybe twelve years around just a tad longer than our very first Prime Minister, who was, if I can remember his name, Sir John A. MacDonald. And 
Let's see. About, I think, maybe around 19 years for King compared to one year for Kim Campbell. And for some reason, Kim Campbell is involved in something that would frig up the anthem. Makes... Uh, I'm not sure whether it... I should laugh my head off or whether I should be PO'd. Even though I'm sure the anthem will never be changed. Then again, honestly... Well, actually, this one guy um, in a comment section came up with that, um, what was it? Oh, I'm forgetful. Oh, yes, this one guy came up with, why not just not have an anthem praising our own country and praise the world? <laughs> and that, that just got me thinking. So, basically an environmentalist's anthem. Although I suppose if he said Earth more so, then I guess that would be more environmentalist crap. Of which way, if you want proof that they are not good people after all. Like, s some, I guess maybe few of them might be not too bad. But really, and um, I, I'm not sure where there's an article for this, but in recent events, the this Greenpeace group, if not, they're just the Greenpeace people, in which this is the day they finally got their official name of being terrorists, because... They wanted to invade, well, they did actually attempt to invade this other oil ship. And the, the funny thing is, their thing is that they wanted to do so because, well, oil hurts the environment and all that bullcrap. Even though if it really did hurt the environment that badly. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt the environment. But it can't do it that badly. Otherwise we'd be dead by now. That's the whole thing with all this pollution. Is that it's... Obviously it's not all that bad. Because we've been doing it for at least a hundred years. I'm pretty sure at least a hundred years we've been polluting the frickin' earth. And are we all dead yet? No. It was predicted we'd be dead at December 21st, 2012. Pardon me. It's just about to yawn there. Um, it was also thought of for the end of 2000, although I don't really remember that, because I'd have only been four. Three or four something like that and um the world hasn't ended yet and no one's died and uh, apparently according to thing um there was no fireball in october 2012 which i never really heard about unless you mean the solar storm or solar flare that was supposed to be December 2012. Originally it was scheduled for 2011, but they decided it's going to be 2012. Well, yes. Yeah, that would that was December 2012 thing. And the 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 real funny thing about this though, and not to mention it's absolutely stupid, not to mention, of course, hypocr hypocritical, is that even their own vessel was running on polluting 
fuels. And yet they want to, and yet they attack another ship because it has polluting fuels. It really doesn't make too much sense. But, maybe get off that subject for a little bit. And, let's get to this next one. And I will provide links to these in the show notes, of course. Um, this was on Slash Dot. And as usual, I get great stuff from them every day. In which, this um, guy who is a... Uh, so, Blogolog writes, I have a kid that's turning four years old soon, and I'm not able to be with him as often as I want to. To remedy this, I'm looking into whether or not getting him a phone could be a good idea to keep in touch. Being able to have a video chat is important, and as it is rare that a four-year-old has a mobile phone, and because he's got other things to do, it would be good to be able to turn off, for example, games, and soon during time in the kindergarten. So other kids don't go around asking their parents for a smartphone. The main reason for getting the phone is keeping in touch, and as a bonus, it can function as a device for games and so on during allowed times. Are there any phones that are suitable for such use? I don't mind if it's Android, iOS, or something else. As long as it can be used to make video calls to other Android, iOS phones, and if it features other applications such as games, have limited predefined functionality during certain periods of the day. Sorry if you didn't catch all that, I will link to this so that you can read it yourself. Just thought I would try reading it fast and furious. But um, one of these comments down here that I could um, quite well agree with. Um, although I gotta say the first comment here, or whether it is actually the f first comment, I guess it probably could be by Frosty PISS in which his subject is are you serious and are you serious the most suitable phone for a four-year-old is one without a battery really you need to focus on more important things for your child at that age um, I just I just gotta I bet I kind of find that funny. Because, you know, some kids... Sh th that's the funny thing with nowadays, is... For me back then, we didn't have all that tech. I'd always be probably going outside after doing homework or watching TV. But if going outside, we had a swing set. And I'd play on that, although we don't have it anymore. And not to mention, if I use a swing set anymore, I get a nauseous feeling. But, um, but the reply to that that I could more agree with, and he replies to this other guy, so I guess I'll read this other guy's thing too, who is RWVEN. Sounds like the parent and child are separated. Hmm. Nothing wrong with trying to stay connected at a distance. Assuming whoever is with the kiddo is aware slash approving. And Frosty PISS's reply to that was... Giving a four-year-old a phone is not the solution to the problem. By the way... My wife and I, and I mean the Frost APISS guy, I don't have a wife, I'm too young, I'm only 17. My wife and I Skype three times a week with our grandchildren, who are about that age. Works much better than handing them a phone. And why I can agree with that is 
is uh, that is really all you need. You don't need a phone. Like if all you really want to do there is communicate with your child over long distance, just use something like Skype or Google Hangouts. There's even that. Although you'd also have to... Well, I think you'll have to have an email account for Skype, but... There's those two options, which could be used for that kind of contact. Rather than spending... And, and not to mention... The best... Crap, I just hit my mic. The best part about that is that it's free and a phone for one of these higher end ones it's over 200 bucks or for a lower end one it's still money oh and I guess the difference between Frosty PISS's first post and his last post was his first one got a score of 4 as insightful Second post, score of five as informative. As well as that, RW Van was just insightful. And again, I'm not really too familiar with slash dots rating system for comments, so yeah. Hello, I'm trying so hard not to yawn too much here, and I keep on tugging on my headset. It's wire, I mean cord. But I will put that in the show notes, like I said. Um, next up. Um, actually, I'll get to this one thing here. You all know what I'm talking about at the end of this show. I think it fits more with shoutouts. Um, so... This came up, Valve's Steam Initiative needs Half-Life 3. So what's going on with Steam is they're currently coming out with new stuff, including Steam Machines and the Steam Operating System, or for short, Steam OS. And basically this whole project revolves around Oh, and then the Steam controller, which is for, which is compatible with their big picture mode. Well, will be compatible with it. And so what they're doing here is they are pushing their way into their into the console market, so that there's not just the Wii U. The PlayStation 3 and then upcoming PlayStation 4. And the Xbox 360 and coming soon Xbox One. Or even the Wii as well. But so that there's. Huh, pardon me again. I'll be sure to edit these parts out of me yawning. Yeah, that's the thing thing with your comment there. Half-Life 3 will probably be on their new operating system. Is that... What the thought here is, is that it would be a great place to... Um, put in the Half-Life 3, finally, is with their new operating system. So then, Half-Life 3 could be, and so if you heard a squeaky sound or something, I'm just adjusting my chair. Um, but, so what's going on here is, again, they're trying to push into the console market, into, the, into what they call the living room project or something like that. And so they've already started with the XI3, which is a very tiny computer with the 
Steam operating system for big picture mode. And by the way, it's bloody expensive, so if you're looking into getting it, be aware of the pricing and if you still want to go for it, tell me how it is. Well, you don't have to tell me, but I'd love to know how it is. And in my opinion, it would be a great idea to finally get in the Half-Life 3. And there's already been stuff with that. There is a team at Valve or something or other working on the third Half-Life game, which what Half-Life is, is you play as this guy called Gordon Freeman, not Morgan Freeman, but his brother Gordon Freeman. Uh, I guess you can maybe call them half-brothers. Or at least, well, I hope that doesn't sound racist or anything. Because one's black, one's white. <laughs> well, anyhow. Then again, Morgan Freeman's real. And I love that guy. He's a great actor, great inspiration. And Gordon Freeman is a kick-butt video game character who kills aliens and saves a lab. And so what's going on is... I think in Half-Life 2 they bring in more stuff with the nation being oppressed by the government and aliens everywhere and whatnot. Um, I apologize if I'm a little incorrect on this. I have only played the demo version of Half-Life 2 and some of a cracked version of Half-Life 1. So yeah, that, so that's what's going on here. Feel free to give your say on what you think of it in the comment section. Like on YouTube or Spreaker or wherever else I put this thing. Even on Twitch if you can or on the flippin' awesome dot engine dot com slash BNP. And so that that's what that is and the next article is oh, I guess I'm already running low on articles. Um this I really found was actually pretty cool in which it is an animated open letter to JJ J. Abrams about how he should make the new Star Wars trilogy starting with episode 7 and he comes up with don't have it too far in the well how he puts it is basically it's far in the future but nothing looks like super futuristic but more so um old realistic in a way um you can this is an article on io9 and it links to his youtube video and um it's i, I really can't remember too much about it. I just found a site link to it, dear J.J. Abrams, in which he is also the director behind the Watch Me, the Star Trek series, including um, Star, well, Star, the 2009 Star Trek and then the most recent Star Trek Into Darkness, which I highly recommend those movies. Very good stuff. And basically the whole thing with this 
campaign, well not really campaign, but the open letter is to make sure that J.J. Abrams does not screw up Star Wars, which a lot of people have said that the um, prequel trilogy to Star Wars sucked, except for the third one was pretty good. But, I really don't see how it was too bad. Then again, I am not sure I've really seen it in uh, at least, no, I, I don't think I have seen the prequel series in about a year. But, um, so that's what's going on there. Pardon me. Oh, and in other news, and I don't have this in the show notes, but it is a petition on change.org in which earlier I had talked about this petition that was to get... Nickelodeon to stop with their junk food ads, which I hated. And then the one during the fourth episode of Blaze on Nation with Matt Folks and the petition I talked about was the one that made the Monster KP event a little, yeah, Monster Charity event a little not so great because everyone started complaining that they weren't getting capes. But this guy, Mike Juilliard, who lives in Toronto on Canada, so in the same province as myself, has petitioned Rockstar to release Grand Theft Auto 5 on PC, and I can very well agree with this. And we talked to, well, I talked about this last episode, and an update on it is that it's really, it's reached over half of its goal, which is to get one million signatures total, which is, which could be enough for Rockstar to make up their minds and get a PC port set up. And so the actual number right now is 579,596 supporters out of 420,404 which are needed. And I'm sure the number is due to change. I'll refresh it here to see if it does change already on me. I cannot believe you think you're filling up the chat. I think in your... Actually, I won't go there. And... It's still reloading. And... And the, with this petition, the interesting thing too is that every single signature that goes on his petition sends the thing straight to EA and I guess it has just gone up because now it's at 579,601 and it's probably gonna change from there too which he also states in his latest video update on the petition to not um, bug him about it because it's all being sent to Rockstar and they know full well about the petition. But like I said last episode, in my opinion, if 
to have the PC port for Grand Theft Auto 5 be like a 10 out of 10? If in order for that to be that good on PC, on PC, sorry, I just had something stump me in my throat. Um, it's gonna take Rockstar months to do. Then really, so be it. Like, why rush them? And then again, they might not even be working on a PC port. And if you aren't Rockstar, get working on one. Cause just having it be console exclusive, you're missing out on a lot of marketing there. And not to mention, really, and no matter what console junkies say, you really do get the best performance in your games when playing them on pretty much a Windows computer. Since Linux lacks compatibility with a lot of the games and Apple, I think, also lacks compatibility, but it really just sucks. Because it's Apple. <laughs> well, j just that, though, is that the compatibility, really. And the fact that, unless you're using a Mac Pro, an iMac Pro, your computer's gonna heat, overheat easily, cause everything is packed in to such small space, so it's like a laptop kind of, and laptops easily overheat. And the petition just went up one supporter. And so that's what's going on there. Um. I'm really not sure what else there is, other than I'm going to get that other stuff set up. Um, oh, and be, before I close, actually, I'll get to this before shoutouts. It, it's sort of saddening, I really I'm not sure if I want to say too much because I don't know much about Tom Clancy, but recently he passed away at the young age of 66, as in my book. Old is at least not, yeah, at least 90. And so. He had just passed away Tuesday, so two days ago, on the 1st of October, and he, w he died in the Johns Hopkins Hospital after he had a, his brief illness, and if you don't know who he was, he was a very good, well, apparently a very good author. I haven't read any of his books, but he's well known for his um, good storytelling with The Hunt for Red October and Patriot Games. And these inspired blockbuster movies as well as action-packed video games including... Uh, I think probably is most, uh, actually, well, yeah, two of his most famous, I think, would be Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, which just is going to come out with Blacklist, and the Rainbow series. Although there's also going to be a Ghost Recon version. Yeah, Rainbow Six. 
Ghost Recon and Splinter Cell. And according to Thang, without him, there won't be Tom, though, all those Tom Clancy video games and books such as The Red, The Hunt for Red October. And so, my, s crap, I just exited out of the stream, my bad. And so, my condolences to the family of Tom Clancy, uh, but it must be a pretty darn hard time. I'm sure he was a very good person, I honestly don't know too much about him. But, he did great stuff. And the stuff he did got very good reviews. And so you guys have my condolences. And God, take good care of him. As you always do. And I will have a link to this obituary. Baltimore Sun. In the show notes. And so... I guess I'm gonna close this up now. Um, so before I do close, I'm um, sorry about the pause here. Is that? And he's not here today again, but from episode four. If you need big web hosting space, but don't have a low budget, then shop at store dot note e no note and then lek so that's l e k well n o t l e k dot com today and you can get good web hosting starting at one ninety nine U S dollars per month or more simply two bucks per month. I plan on getting myself it too, so you won't be alone in signing up for it, and go make him some money. And my one of my friends who's come into the stream a lot, Aiden Man, has just found out that he's missed out on the podcast. So, my apologies to you. Um, like I said last week, go check out... Well, I'm not sure if I did say it last week, but... Go check out Just a Gaming Blog, WordPress, something like that. Um, or the Steam group is... Just a Gaming Blog, I think, that are Just Gaming... Or he uses the just a gaming blog, just a gaming dot blogspot dot com. Very good community there. And what else is there? Huh. I really am not too sure. Well, if I miss anything, I'll be sure to include that in the show notes unless I can find it on the site here um, for f future updates on the time of the next episode um, g plus dot to slash jbj blaze jbj blaze dot blogspot dot ca twitter dot well oh, twitter at jbj blaze um, GBJ Blaze on Tumblr. Um, the URLs you can already see on my screen here. Um, the Flippin' Awesome is the official Steam group for everything that goes on my YouTube, which is JBJ Blaze. Um, Spreakers, slash show, slash JBJ, yeah, Blaze on Nation. My apologies. And do not forget to, again, check out the show notes that will be coming in a couple of days at the most at 
the flippin' awesome dot engine dot com slash BNP or Blazonation dot TK and why did I not leave that for the outro? I am a silly man. Well, I thank you all for watching or listening or well just tuning in. Um maybe I'll find it on here. This one thing here. Um maybe I don't have it. Yeah, for some reason my recent thing has doubled itself. But um thank you all for watching and I will see you all next Thursday. Ta ta And that'll be next week Thursday. Ta ta <laughs>